and on-site support to clients around the world. Dave is also an unrecovered Lions fan and believing in the eventual possibility of a playoff spot has doubtless given him the strength of will and character to continue working towards our eventual total victory over the forces of network evil. Ladies, gentlemen, and assorted security professionals, please give a warm, besides it's almost party o'clock welcome to David Trollman. <laughs> all right, uh, can you guys hear me? You hear me all right? All right, thanks. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. I know I'm the last speaker. I know I'm a, a last minute substitute, but I, I'm happy to be here. Uh, so, yeah, I'll be honest, this is the most professional slide of the rest of the deck, so it just goes south from here. So, uh, yeah, my name's Dave Trollman. I'm the Director of Incident Response for Access Data, uh, Resolution 1, and Centricate, you know, whatever. Whatever you want me to be, I'll, I'll direct and into incident respond. Uh, so, just a quick disclaimer, because everybody has to have some sort of disclaimer aid, so I'm going to sling mine. Uh, all opinions, thoughts are my own. Uh, I use a lot of memes. Uh, it's not for profit. It's definitely not uh, used for the profit of scumbag Steve there. Um, if I fail to shout out to someone's tool, it's unintentional. I love tools. I am a tool. So uh, just a quick overview. Uh, I'm going to talk today. I'm going to walk you through a quick scenario. Uh, if anybody's actually done incident response for a while, they probably have had a similar type scenario happen to them. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about why I think speed is greater than forensic soundness. Um, that's that's kind of a, uh, I don't know, it's blasphemy at Access Data right now, but, but it is what it is. Uh, I'll give you kind of a list of things that I would grab if I'm in the middle of an incident and I just want to go home. Uh, talk a little bit about what the odds are of, of systems that are compromised and, and when they're compromised, who, who, uh, how they're being popped. Um, and then I'm going to give a list of the tools that I'm going to use for the demo. And then, God willing, I'm going to do a demo. Uh, so. <laughs> And then lastly, I'll finish up with just kind of a reality check. So obviously, demos are really, really, uh, you know, if they work well, they look really polished and, and really uh, good. But the reality is, is that you know, this, stuff, this stuff goes sideways really quickly. So uh, just some quick, you know, so right off the bat, you're enjoying your day. It's 4 o'clock. It's, you know, it's 3 in the afternoon. You're getting ready to leave. And then a van like this rolls up. Um, and then homeboys like this come walking out of the van. And then your, your first thought might be, okay, man, time to be cool. Uh, I'm here celebrating uh, Earth Day. Uh, but in reality, you're about to become one of those 4% of people that have to work on a Friday. Uh, and it's always Friday. It's always 3 p.m. It's always right before maybe a three-day weekend or a holiday or something like that. That shit starts to go sideways. Uh, and so what I'm going to talk about is, is what you can do to get yourself up and running and get rocking and rolling. So... But before I dig into that, I really want to dig into why I think incident response uh, and speed in incident response is more important than forensic soundness. Uh, I'll, I'll just be honest, you know, your job usually as an incident responder is to get shit back up and running. Uh, if you're a firefighter, a firefighter doesn't stop at the house and say, nobody move, nobody breathe, I've got to figure out who set the fire. In, in reality, a firefighter goes in and tries to go save people, save property, you know, do that, do that kind of work. You're kind of in the same situation, but generally you're going to be fatter, whiter, and not as fit. So um, that, that's, that's a joke, howdy. Um, so, but the deal is, uh, you, your important job is to get the, the system back up and running, get your company back up and running. It's not to go to court. And let's be honest, you are not going to testify about forensic techniques in court. I've, I've been doing this, like, a, like the bio says, for 10 years. I've never had to go to court. I've never had to testify in court. Uh, and, a, and a lot of times, if you're working with the feds, they've already got some sort of data that, that's legally admissible through whatever wiretaps or whatever the hell they're doing to, to have identified you as a possible victim. So if you go and start running tools on your boxes, yeah, they're probably going to get pissed at you because you didn't collect an image or something like that. But the fact of the matter is, uh, they're the FBI, they want taxes, so they want to keep your company in business so you can pay taxes. Uh, if you are, a lot of people will say, you know, step one, collect the full disk image. That's a waste of time. It takes forever. How many guys have done a full disk image before? Yeah, it blows. It takes forever. And to be honest with you, it doesn't really capture the information that you really need during an incident. Um, it, you're real, and what you end up doing is you, you collect a bunch of disk images, and then you're just sorting through files willy-nilly with kind of no 
concept of where you're wanting to go or what you're wanting to collect. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about five things that I would collect, and it doesn't involve a full disk image. Uh, if, if you want to, I can, you know, do a full disk image after this, and uh, we can talk tomorrow when it's done. But, but in reality, I'm going to do this demo in 30 minutes. Um, and, and I mean, the bottom line, again, is you really do need to get your shit back up and running. That's the most important part of incident response. Uh, but at the same time, you don't want to just, uh, a lot of folks will just say, hey, just wipe the box and go keep moving. But that doesn't really get you any information either. Uh, so these simple tools you can run. It takes about 30 minutes to get all the data. Uh, and then call, call it a day. You go ahead and wipe the box. And you've got some good data that can help you attribute the attack, figure out what's going on. Uh, and then better, more importantly, stop the rest of the attack so you don't have to burn down your entire infrastructure. So uh, playing the odds, uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to guess here that most of the time uh, it's going to be a Windows box. I know somebody came up here yesterday and said there's a shit ton of malware for OS 10. That is true. Chances are, though, it, attackers are going to go after your Windows boxes, especially if they're moving laterally through your network or something like that. It's going to be on a Windows box. Uh, chances are, if the box is popped, it's going to be a, a server or it's going to be a VIP. You know, one of those VIPs that has like one of those nice, really Dell, like really Gucci 13-inch Dell XPS boxes that they never want to go home with. Um, there's a good chance that the box that you're dealing with is not the only box that's pwned on your network. Um, so that's another important fact as to if you just wipe that box, if it's patient four, then patient three, two, one, and zero are still out there. So you need to gather a, not a full disk image worth of data, but you need to gather some data that's going to help you figure out where that attack came from. Uh, and then finally, you know, when it comes to attack vectors, there's really only a handful of attack vectors that are really valid in terms of, of finding how the system got compromised. And this is going to help you, you in your investigation. There's going to be a phishing attack. It's going to be a web server compromise. It's going to be maybe a browser exploit. Um, everybody patches Java all the time, right? Yeah. OK, yeah. Well, you, got, you guys are all excited here. So but yeah, nobody patches Java. Um, so and then the last part is, is you have a misconfig uh, or a default password. Chances are you want to know that, because chances are there are other systems that are misconfigured or have a default password that you want to know about and look for on your network. But you have to get that information first to find out how the attack came through. Oh, and by the way, uh, this is just really simple. Don't shut off the system. Don't be a moron. And, and this, this is also another part of this. If it is a VIP's box or if the Fed showed up, chances are you've got a lawyer there, and, and usually you're not allowed to talk to the FBI. It's a lawyer that talks to the FBI for you. That person and then probably a C-level person are, are there. They're completely freaking out. Um, so the first thing they're going to do is shut off the system. They're going to tell you to shut off the system. Don't do that. Uh, they're going to tell. They're going to start Googling around, and they're going to say, hey, dude, let's, down let's download malware bytes, and we'll be good. Uh, or they're going to stumble upon some crap like super antivirus XP 2015 uh, which is totally legit, and, and download that and try to run that. And, you know, we've had a couple of cases where clients have called us and said, hey, I downloaded this, you know, janky XP antivirus 2012, and now all my files are encrypted. You know, what should I do? Um, you know, you hit yourself in the head with a ball-peen hammer because you're a moron. Um, and then, you know, the second thing, the third thing I would say there is uh, don't start deleting shit willy-nilly. That's another thing that a lot of people do is, is they... They run some sort of tool, and it tells them they've got malware, and they just start like deleting everything in their System32 folder. Um, or, or they do something, and they just start deleting files left and right. At that point, yeah, I am probably going to have to pull a disk image, because I'm going to find something like in the MFT or in memory, and it's not on disk anymore because you deleted it. So now I'm going to have to go pull it out of Slack space. So thanks for that. Uh, and then lastly, don't freak out. Um, again, firefighters don't freak out. You are the fatter, you know, whiter version of a firefighter. So, be the calm in the storm. And, and that's that's hard to that's hard to say. It's easy to say on a presentation, but it's hard to practice in real life. So, what would I grab? I'm going to grab. Generally, I'm just going to grab five things. I'm going to grab the running memory, the page file, the master file tables, the registry, and the event logs. That's all I need. Uh, and you're going to see here in the demo that it doesn't take that long to get all that information. Um, you know, so running memory, a lot of folks will say, like, oh, you need to run system internal tools to go collect all this information. Nowadays, with volatility, you just grab that memory, you can get all that information out. So you can get ARP tables and all that crap. So just grab the memory. 
uh, page file. It's a little bit tough. You can't do much with it, but there is some value in there. You can see stuff that might have been loaded or hanging in memory virtually. Uh, master file tables is obvious. Uh, a lot of systems, as they're set up, they've got a, a C partition, and then they've got uh, all the files in the C partitions hosting mostly just the operating system. So it's like 32 gigs, maybe 50 gigs. Um, all the actual good data is, is in like D, E, F, and G. Grab all those master file tables, and I'll show you how, how easy it is with some of these tools. Just to point the, the tool at that particular file partition and grab that file table. Uh, registry is kind of an obvious one. You know, most malware is going to hide in the registry, so you want to grab a copy of it. Um, I'm going to show you, there's not really a clean way to do registry collection still. Um, there's no, like, just dump memory, and nobody usually goes and starts mucking around with reg files and that sort of thing. So I'm going to show you just a couple quick techniques to do that. And then lastly, event logs. If all else fails, and if your box is, you know, patient 10 of the attack, uh, event logs are usually probably going to be the only way that you know that that system was logged into or where the login came from or, or something like that. So a lot of times uh, when you have no other s uh, information, event logs are what's going to get you through and help you figure out and map the attack. So get your cameras ready because I'm going to throw up a screenshot after this uh, showing just kind of the tools I'm going to use for the demo. So I'll give you guys a second to whip out your cameras like this creep. <laughs> All right, uh, so the tools I'm going to use to collect a live memory, I'm going to use a tool called a, a WinPmem. It comes from Recall with a K, just like the super sweet movie with uh, Colin Farrell, Total Recall with a K. Uh, the second tool I'm going to use is Belkisoft RAM Capturer. Um, you, can look, you can look all this up on the internet. Uh, you can use Memorize. I've never been able to use Memorize successfully, probably because I'm not smart and I don't work at Mandiant. Um, the second tool I'm going to use to dump the page file is, again, I'm going to use WinPmem. I'm just going to use a different flag, uh, and you'll see that. Uh, the, the other tool I'm going to use is a tool called fget. It's an old HB Gary tool, and, you know, don't freak out about the HB Gary part, but you can still find it on the Internet. Um, and it's a really helpful tool. It collects any sort of locked file. It looks at, you know, weird stuff in the partition that you can pull. Uh, to pull the MFT, I'm going to use a tool called raw copy. Um, you can pull that down off the internet uh, if you can't find fget. Same deal, it, it pulls locked files and, the, and that other information that you need. Uh, for registry, I'm going to use a tool called CrowdResponse, and I've, I've got a, a janky config file that works with uh, that CrowdResponse tool. I, I asked around, and some people said you can use RegRipper, uh, the Harlan Carvey tool. I couldn't get it to work. That's why I kind of put a question mark there. Uh, to do what I wanted it to do. Um, and then uh, I'm going to use raw copy, and I'm just going to capture the raw hives. Uh, and then lastly, for event logs, uh, I prefer to use PS log list. It is a system internal tool. Uh, and the reason I like to use it is because it can poop out a CSV file. Um, the other option is to use raw copy, and raw copy is just going to grab the event logs in, in their raw format, and then you've got to use like an event log viewer or something like that. So. PS log list just works a lot better. You can just point it at it and then get a CSV file and grep to your heart's content. All right. Fuck it, let's do it live. All right, I have, oh, damn, that sucks. Um, I've got a Windows box here, and I'm going to walk you through kind of the, the things I'm going to do as, as I do this. So, um, So step one, maybe try to fix the screen configuration. Ah, fuck it. All right. Um, open up a command prompt as admin. If you didn't know when you have to collect stuff like memory, you need to be admin. That's awesome. Can you guys see that? I'm sure you can. All right. So all I did was I opened up a command prompt as admin. So yay, that part worked. Um, first thing you want to do is a lot of these tools, when you grab them, they're, they're going to be 30, they're going to be compiled for 32 or 64 bit. Um, so you want to know what kind of system you're working on, especially if you're doing this remotely. Um, a lot of times it's not going to be obvious to you. So, uh, there's a couple things you can do. Um, you can just run a Wimmick command. Uh, OS architect. So I did is I just told Wimmick to tell me what the OS architecture is. And then Wimmick told me it was a 32-bit 
operating system. So now I know I can use 32-bit tools. Um, there's usually also a, um, there's a lot of times you can run this set command. And this set command is just going to poop out of the list of environmental variables. So one of the environmental variables you can see is uh, processor architecture. Uh, that's usually going to be there. A lot of times, if it isn't, you can do the Wimmick command to get your information. So you could do just do like an echo cross. Ah, typing. It's like doing public math. So I, I came back with a x86. So now I know it's x86 or 32-bit. There's a there's a bunch of other things you can do to to get this. Um, you can go looking for the SysWow64 or the program files x86 directories. If you see that, then you know you've got a 64-bit system. Um, you can right-click on the computer and go to properties. And then it will tell you you've got a 32-bit operating system. So again, that's it's it's really easy. I'm not going to run the um, I'm not going to run the the um, system info command, but you can do it through system info as well. Um, so the next thing you want to look at is space. Uh, general rule of thumb is to have two or three times the amount of uh, space available on the hard drive to uh, what you have in terms of fixed memory on the system. Because obviously if you're dumping memory and it's two gigs worth of memory, you're going to dump a two gig file onto your hard drive. Um, so general rule of thumb is to have two to three uh, gigs of space. Um, so first thing you got to do a lot of times is, is figure out how much space you've got. So you're going to run that command. And what I'm doing is I'm telling, I'm running system info, which is a uh, built-in command. It, it takes a while to run because it's got to compile a bunch of stuff. But then I'm telling it to, to look for a string called total physical memory, and that will tell me how much memory is installed. But it goes through its entire process before it tells you. So I have two kilobytes of memory. No, okay, so I've got, I've got two gigs of memory. Uh, there's this other uh, command. I couldn't get it to work. Um, it's a Wimmick command. Uh, it might be because I'm, because I'm using a, a, a virtual box, so I got no instances available. But, so now I know I've got two gigs of space, and a lot of people say, well, that's great, Dave, but how do I know how much space I have on my hard drive? People tend to forget that dir will tell you how much space is available right at the bottom. Um, so here you go. I, I've got probably about 11 gigs of space. So I've got two gigs of memory, so I, I should be good to, to do the demo. Um, that's good. So the other thing I do is I'm going to open up a file, and I've got all my tools in one place, and I, I just call it demo tools. Um, but one of the things you want to do is read your script. Um, so one of the first things you want to do, a lot of these tools come with DLL or sys files, like drivers and stuff like that. Uh, the best bet is to not, not try and get fancy and try to stick them in System32 so you can call them and all that. Just stick them in the same folder from, the, from where you're going to run the tools. Uh, so you can see here, like I grabbed Red Ripper um, and I grabbed the DLL with it. Uh, you can see I've got RAM capture. Um, and then I've got its driver file and, and for both of them. So um, that's, that's important. So you, you keep everything just in one place. Uh, the other thing you'll see is I've got this directory called dump. Oh, no wonder. I forgot to delete all this shit. Hey, this is a demo. It's going to look good. Um, now I should have 22. Yeah, now I've got 22 gigs of space. No. Hey, Sean, good to hear from you. Um, all right, so I, I now know I have enough space. I now know I've got the DLLs. I'm, 
for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to set a, uh, a location so I don't have to go back and type uh, the file directory all the time. And this is just a temporary uh, variable. So if I do go demo, now I've got the file location where all, all my tools are stored. Um, The other thing I'm going to do is uh, set a directory. So I don't have uh, my tools and my data co-mingling that I'm collecting. I'm just going to uh, do a quick make dir. Demo dump. Oh, yeah, there you go. So it was already there. Get, get, on, get on me. Again, we're doing this live. Uh, so the next step, and this is an important step, um, and you're going to see why, uh, you need to turn off your AV temporarily. So if you're doing this work and, and your lawyer and your C, CIO or CISO or whoever is there, just tell them to go into the other room. And then when they go into the other room, you're going to turn off uh, AV because obviously this tool, these tools will, where the hell am I? These tools will, uh, not play nicely with Mac, uh, so in this case I've got McAfee installed. No. All you really need to do is turn off uh, real-time scanning. And turn it off. This demo better not take 60 minutes. Uh, so I'm going to turn it off. I'm done. McAfee doesn't like it. That's too bad. But obviously, if you have McAfee, you're never going to get compromised anyway, right? So, <laughs> of course not. Yeah, totally. Oh, thanks, bro. Okay, uh, don't show this alert again. And Windows, every everybody, nobody likes when you turn off AV. Um, all right, so I've got the AV turned off temporarily, so it's now it's time to, and I've got everything set up. I know what uh, I know what kind of operating system I'm going to be doing. I know where I'm going to be dumping the data. Uh, so it's time to just start running some of these tools. So the first tool I'm going to run is uh, WinPmem, and it's I mean it's this simple. It's WinPmem. Where do you want the memory? And then you name it a raw or image or whatever. Uh, so here we go. Fuck you. Um, Sorry. There we go. All right. Let's try it again. There we go. There we go. Yay. So it gives you this nice little screen as it's copying out the memory. You can see these memory tools run really fast, too, uh, which, is, which is good. To be honest with you, I'm happy. I'm really happy at this point. You could, you, you could now go throw the river in, in the bay as long as you pull this file out for me. Um, the other tool I'm going to run is, is the Belkasoft. And then just to let you see, I've got a file I call boss uh, raw. And you see it's about, it's a little bit bigger than, than two gigs, but that, that, that works. So the other tool I'm going to run now is the Belkasoft tool. Again, it is also really easy to run. And I'm going to dump this to a file called foo. Um, and so what, what these tools do is they load a driver, then they dump the memory, and then they unload the driver. So you can see it, it already ran. Um, and the file sizes match, thank God. All right. So that, that part's working. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, grab a page file. Now, WinPmem actually can bake the page file right into the same file it collects the memory. So it's going to make this big-ass 4-gig file for me. Um, and you have to do it in, in the ELF format so you can open it up. Um, so you can see here I'm... I'm telling WinPmem, I give it that P flag so it collects the page file. I give it that E flag so it dumps the, the ELF file. And then I, I just called it dump.elf. This one's going to take a little bit longer. I think this is the longest. Um, it's either this one or the next dump of the page file that's, that's going to take the longest. So memory runs. 
and it collects a memory. And then it starts reading the page file, and then it's going to start copying the page file and putting it into the uh, dump. So you can see it goes 50 megs at a time, so it's, it could take a while. Um, this, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd recommend this tool to, um, you know, if you're doing like a big 32 gig memory dump or not, I'd probably recommend Balkasoft. Um, and how many people have dealt with users who modify their page file to make their system run faster? Yeah, don't you want to punch those people in the face? Because, uh, because I mean, if this, if Homeboy's like, oh, I'm going to speed up my system and give it like 32 gigs of page file, now I got to go dump this and I got to go through this. You know, thanks, thanks, bro. Um, yeah, again, ball peen hammer. Um, so now I've got this. Now you're going to see I've got this mega four four gig file, and that's going to be about the equivalent of my RAM. Uh, dump as well as my page file dump. So my page file was about two gigs. Uh, the other tool I'm going to use is the fget tool. And uh, for those of you that don't know, page file sits on system. It's it's hidden um, and it's usually locked. But uh, fget can extract any sort of locked file. So it's just telling it, uh, hey, fget, extract the C page file dot sys file and then dump it into page file dot sys. This is actually the longest time. Um, it's always a good sign if fget has that little plus and says it actually found the file. Um, just FYI, uh, if you do decide to use this tool. Um, this does take a little bit of time. So uh, yeah, it, I mean, you're dumping two gigs of memory. Um, I have no jokes at this time. My apologies. Uh, did you guys get some free food? Did you guys get a donut? Oh my god. I'm about to pass out because I had one of those donuts. Um, and I'm a little hungover too. So, um, so I got that going for me. Uh, but I almost drank some of the water here, like previous speaker water. That's, that's really gross. Um, so. And if I was a consultant, by the way, I would be charging you for that time that I was running that tool, so just to let you know. All right, so I grabbed the, uh, I grabbed the page file. You can see the page file is about the same size, give or take you know, a, a couple uh, of uh, kilobytes from the memory, so that, that makes sense. Um, so now I'm going to start grabbing the MFTs. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use raw copy to grab the first MFT. Um, you can see the command here that I'm going to run. It's really simple. Raw copy and then C. So now if I wanted to grab a D, well, I just change that to a D. If I want to grab Z, grab it to a Z, whatever you need to do. Um, this goes pretty fast. The, the file, um, because it's a VM and I don't have a lot of stuff on there, the MFT's uh, pretty small. Um, wait for it. There, I took two seconds. Um, yeah, so it's 138K. Uh, the other way you can dump it is with fget. fget, again, can grab any sort of locked file. Um, so just, I'm just telling fget, hey, extract the, the C dollar sign MFT file, which should be there, uh, and then dump it into this binary file so I can go process it with like analyze MFT pi or something. Um, so fget again found the file, thank goodness, and dropped it. And so if I go back, oh, thank God they're the same size. All right. That's always a good sign if uh, stuff works that way. All right. Now the registry, and this is the longest and most boring part of it. Um, the registry is, is, I haven't found a good tool out there that can dump a registry uh, reliably in the format that I like to use it in. Uh, uh, I used to work, yeah. Uh, usually the uh, dollar sign in, uh, in NFTS is just showing like a hidden file area. Yeah. So I mean that's that's a pretty standard place to go look for it. Oh, the 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 output file? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's just I think that's just how it grabbed it. Right? You're talking right here. Yeah, I think that's just how it grabbed it. Okay. 
yeah. So it grabs a, it just grabbed it right off a disk, including the file name. So I don't know if you I, you might be able to rename the file when you pull it with raw copy. I, I don't know. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Uh, so registry, like I said, I haven't found any really good tools. When I used to work, uh, when I was at GE, uh, we made our own custom tool that, that dumped MFTs the exact way I wanted it to. Um, unfortunately, I forgot to take that on my way out. Um, you know, ethics and crap like that. Yeah. So, um, so the first tool I'm going to use is this tool called CrowdResponse. It's a freely available tool. Um, and I'm going to, and I gave it, so if you look at the command, I basically tell crowd response, and then I give it this input file that's a uh, CR, crconfig.txt, and then I tell it to dump the file out to an XML file. That, that gives me a lot of options when it comes to parsing. There's also a tool that comes along with this called crconvert, so you can take the XML file and then convert it into CSV, uh, which is ultimately what a lot of people do, because again, now you've got a CSV with like the time that the key was created the key value and, and all of that, so it makes it a lot easier to, to grep and look around and put it into like a log to timeline type thing. So my uh, CR config tool is just a bunch of commands that it, it sends over to crowd response, and the command to dump certain registry values is at reg dump, and then I just start throwing, um, uh, I don't remember what the S value is, but I just, uh, I just tell it to start grabbing different uh, locations that I want to go grab. Mouse. Does anybody see my mouse? Yeah, dude, I got. I got lost in the matrix here. Um, what was that? Yeah. I'm here. Let's see. Did I? Is it the other way? There we go. It's opposite. Anyway. Uh, so where was I? Okay. I'm going to run crowd response. All right. I got. Oh, yeah, this is right. So crowd response and McAfee don't get along. Um, so I actually have to go back and pull crowd response out of uh, the place where I had it before. Uh, so as soon as you drop crowd response, McAfee somehow thinks it's a piece of malware. So it, it deletes it. Yeah, so it, it takes care of it, right? Um, so I always have to put it back in the demo. Yeah. Yeah, that's turn it off, man. And if you had your chance, A B and and you missed it. All right. Yay, I think it's working. It should run pretty fast. I have a I have a fairly small registry. Um it doesn't give you any sort of fancy little feedback that it's working. Um, you can go back into the dump, and then you'll start to see this reg file uh, get written. There we go. Yep. So there's my registry reg file. Um, I'm not going to open it up, but it's just an XML file. Um, and then once you once you if you have the CR convert tool, you can just pass the XML file to the CR convert tool, and it'll convert it into a text file or CSV or whatever you want. Uh, raw copy, this, this part gets boring because I'm going to have to start going and grabbing the registry hives. Um, so the first one I'm going to go grab is the security registry. So there's, um, for those of you who don't know, the registry hives live in this uh, system32 config folder.
And so I'm telling raw copy to go grab uh, the security file out of that. And it's, it, again, it's a locked file because it's hooked into the registry. It's going to run, and security and um, the SAM file are usually pretty small. They get bigger if you've like, got a lot of profiles and crap like that going on. Pardon me? A carrot? Oh, it's, it's some sort of uh, raw copy file. I don't, I don't know what it is. But it works, so security's there. Yay. Yeah. All right, so that, that works. Uh, usually software and system are, are bigger parts of the registry, so this one will take... This one will take a consultant second to do. And by that I mean it takes 1.2 seconds to run. Um, so you see it's a slightly bigger file. And then the last uh, file you want to grab is the system file. And that's going to have the system registry stuff. So now I've got I've got those files, and if you do a little little bit of math, there there's a there's a shortage there. So there's a couple of files I still need to grab. Um, the way the registry works in Windows, it's a little weird. Uh, user user specific parts of the registry are stored in two files called user class and nt user. Uh, so in order to go find where those files are buried, you have to go look for them. So you're going to run this uh, first command to go find where NT user dat is. Uh, and if it works, so I just go to the root of C and I tell it to go run this directory and just poop out the location of any NT user dot dat. I've only got one profile on this system, so it should only find one. Oh, actually, I've got a couple. So I could go grab all those. Uh, it's going to keep searching for a little bit. And it found four NT user dat files. So I could go grab all four of those if I wanted to. Um, but just for purposes of this demo, I'm just going to grab the one on my user profile. P. Do. There we go. And did this last time. Hey, that worked. So now I've got, <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, but so now I've got an NT user uh, file there. And then the other one I want to go grab is uh, the user class dot dat file. So again, I'm going to run this dir command to go look for where nt user, um, where the dir user class is. Again, this is the most painful and boring part of this talk. So it found it in this app data local Microsoft uh, user class. So I'm going to go grab that. You might notice I'm at the uh, I'm at the root of C, so I actually have to give it uh, just real quick. I have to give it the demo variable that I set earlier, so it's not trying to look for raw copy at the root of C. Um, just another reason to to go ahead and set your uh, path at the beginning of, of what, whatever you're doing. All right, so now I've got a user class dot dat file. I've got an nt user. So this is all these are all registry files that you can now like throw at uh, Red Dripper, whatever you want to do to go look for that, uh, to go process that. Or you could take this reg file and then turn it into a CSV and then you can ready to rock. Um, so the last thing I need to do is grab the event logs. So the event logs obviously are important. Where they're going to hide is, is in the uh, Windows System 32 win event logs uh, directory. Um, and there's only usually three that I that I uh, ask people to grab, and it's really easy to remember. It's just ass. It's application, system, and security. Uh, so just grab those three files. So grab some ass. Um, don't forget to CD to the demo folder. Or
So then I grab the event.txt uh, file, and you can tell it's an application file, so it, you could open this up in Event Viewer if you were so inclined. Um, then I'll grab the system. I'll grab that. And then I'll grab the security one, so ASS. So now I've got those files. And again, I can go back now and look at these in Event Log Viewer. I can do anything like that. You know, my honestly, my preferred method is to use PS Log List because it gives you a CSV file. And if you wanted to, you could pipe all of these into one big CSV file so you can go rooting around for it. Um, so I'm just, oh, it's already done. So I'm telling PS log list to uh, give it to me in a string, so it gives it one string at a time, and then the X flag tells it to give me the extended values and the extended information in there. Um, if you exclude either one of those, it just kind of dumps it out into this crazy text file that's hard to work with. So um, strings allows you to like send it over to grep or something like that if you wanted to look for that. Um, There it is, grabbing the uh, system files, and then the CSV for uh, security. And, and generally, if you are running any sort of investigation with advanced attacker, uh, security is the most important log file, because that's going to show you when somebody logged in, when somebody logged out. Um, if you're an attacker, that's generally the first thing you're going to go delete. So. Um, so now I've got those, I've got those files. Um, so I can go. This is all the information that you need, really, at this point. I've got multiple copies of everything. So you could just run one of these tools to collect all five of those things. Um, so I've got the memory, uh, the page file, the master file tables, uh, the registry, and then the event logs. And then again, I, I go grab some ass. So I grab application, system, and security event logs. So that is it for that part of the demo, and it worked. And my hand is sore from doing this. Don't, don't clap yet. Save your, save, your, save your clapping for the end. All right, so we did it live. Um, so the reality is you can script this if you want. You just saw me run a bunch of copy-paste commands into something. You can write a script. I'm going to give you an example of a script out there. Um, there are a lot of wonderful endpoint threat detection and response technologies like Resolution 1 Cybersecurity that could do this for you if you were so inclined. Um, but I will tell you, one of, if you are working with a consultant and they walk in and they start imaging every box they can get their hands on, that should raise a red flag for you because that's not real IR. That's, I mean, you just saw I just did IR, you know, for intents and purposes. I knocked it out. I did double the amount of IR that I would normally do. And I would charge you four times for that. Um, most of us don't, but the reality is, too, you know, it, you could write a script. You could buy an ETDR solution. You could go get yourself some FTK imager and a bunch of hard drives and start running around like a madman. But most of us don't have the time to do this, right? Like, we, we don't have the time to write the scripts. And especially in the middle of an incident, you don't have time to go ask for money to go uh, deploy an ETDR solution. Uh, no matter what a sales guy tells you, it's going to take a little bit more than 24 hours to go deploy an ETDR to, to all of your endpoints. Uh, so this is, this is just how to get you started. Just grab a bunch of tools, run a bunch of commands, gather that data. Obviously, you saw that file. You could just 7-zip it, compress it, and then just send that to me, and that's a fantastic start. Um, and we can do that over the phone. We can do that really quickly. Um, so if you give me that dump directory, I'd, I'd be very happy. Uh, here are some examples of, of some of the tools. I just wanted to give a shout out to, to the homies that pointed me into some of this direction. There's a script out there. Uh, it, it's, it's available on uh, Journey to, to IR, blogspot.com. It's called the TR3 script. It basically is that batch script that I'm talking about. Um, and all you have to do is throw in a bunch of the tools that are in there um, and, and then point TR3 on whatever box you want to run it on. Yes?
Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll find a place to post it. Yeah. Uh, they wanted me to post my text file from the talk, so. Yeah, as long as my VM holds up uh, between here and Detroit, and as long as like I don't get mugged and my Mac doesn't get stolen, um, I should be good to do that. Um, but yeah, anyway, a TR3 script is another way to do that. Uh, he goes really fancy and sets architecture variables and all sorts of cool stuff, which generally you have to do to make this thing work uh, properly. Um, so if you want to grab that, take a look at that, it's, it's there. Uh, crowd response, again, I, I, walk, I walked around asking for who, who does registry good. Um, and my buddy Chris Merritt at CrowdStrike pointed me at, at the crowd response tool. And then the Belkasoft tool I got turned on uh, from my uh, buddy Jordan Cruz. He's on our, he's on our uh, Centricate team. Um, if you do go to the Belkasoft site and grab it, you have to put in some uh, personal, you have to put in like an email address. So just put in like a mailinator address or something so you don't, they don't bother you. Um, so thanks. That's it. Um, yeah, brutal story, Co. <laughs>